guys, how's it going? So today I'm running around the garden just cleaning up some annual plants that I have in the ground um, because it's been pretty cold. So it's not super cold right now, uh, but it's gone down to 21 degrees and right around that area. And so you can see that some of my annual grasses are looking kind of bad. So I just wanted to talk about three different things that I do with annual grasses, starting with this vertigo penicetum, which I've planted at the corner of our gazebo. There are only three grasses in here three that I planted from four inch containers earlier on this year. They grow super fast and super huge. And I actually heard that Proven Winners might be coming out with one that gets even bigger than this, which is crazy. This is an impressive grass, but they do not handle a cold very well. Um, in fact, when it gets down to freezing, uh, they turn kind of this brownish gray right here instead of the nice glossy black. Um, so with the first, the first thing I do with annual grasses is of course, remove them. Um, so I just wanted to give you a little tip in that area, especially if you're dealing with bigger grasses like this. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna tie them all up. I'm gonna tie them all up with string. Um, so that I can cut them off at the base and they'll all come off in one piece instead of cutting them with the clippers a little bit at a time and making a big mess. I've kind of found that this is a faster way of doing it and then we'll dig out the root balls. So let me grab my string and scissors. So I've got my big ball of twine and some scissors here and I'm just gonna gather up the grass. Now, like I said, it's not super cold right now but I have my coat and gloves on because this grass is kind of wicked. Like it's paper cut city if you get too close to it with bare skin. So I kind of got, all suited up for this task. I'm going to gather them together and it's going to get really noisy. So I'm just going to explain it uh, right now. Um, I'll gather it up at the base and tie it off. And then I'll take a string and kind of just spin it around the grass all the way to the top and then tie it off again. So it's all one big piece. So you can see I have the twine all the way around this grass. I don't think I need to take it up any further in height, um, but I'm just going to tie it off right here and then use my hedge trimmers to cut it off at the base. So this is a DeWalt uh, hedge trimmer that I use for practically everything around here. It has a 22 inch blade um, and it cuts through stuff like this way easier than having to use my hand pruners, which really tires my wrist out after a while. off in one big piece like this all tied together. Now these grasses got so big that it was actually a little bit hard for my hedge trimmers to make it through the base. Um, usually I'm dealing with smaller grasses so you could get loppers out and just lop off all the big uh, stalks but I eventually got through it and you're left with very minimal mess. You know I'll just have to bring a little rake out here clean up the extra after I'm done digging. All right so now I'm going to do the same exact thing with the other two and then we'll start digging out the root balls. all three of the grasses cut off here. Can you believe that? I mean, this is the base of them and they just got so, so big. So really all I need to do now is just dig out the root balls and then rake up the area. And I will be left with three small holes in this area. But what I like to do is when I'm cleaning out containers around the house, if I've got any extra soil left at the bottom, which usually in larger containers, we're left with a little bit, um, I'll fill in the holes with that soil. So anyway, I've got to make sure too that I don't hit any of my drip tubing. You can kind of see it running throughout here, but this part is pretty self-explanatory. I like to do with annual and perennial grasses actually that are on the medium to short end of things is just to let them be because they look absolutely beautiful with a layer of frost or a light dusting of snow their structure is just gorgeous uh, and they make for really good forage and habitat for wildlife as well uh, so these are purple fountain grass that I planted really late in the season so they stayed kind of on the shorter side of things so I'm just gonna leave these they've already kind of turned a little bit uh, they typically in our area it's mid-october they're usually still their kind of nice dark red brown color but since we had that really cold night they've already changed a little bit but the structure is absolutely beautiful for anything 
taller than this um, annual or perennial. For a perennial, I would cut it back if it was taller. Um, like the vertigo penicetum that I just dug out, anything that size, if you get a lot of snow, can create a huge mess if you leave it up during the winter. So I usually only leave grasses about this size or lower. And then the last way I like to use annual grasses is for something like this, where I know I need to clean out this container here soon, but I've still got this absolutely gorgeous grass. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one off and use it as a centerpiece for a fall kind of arrangement out here by our fireplace. So to do that, it's much like the uh, vertigos. I'm gonna tie it together to where it re really looks nice and then we'll cut it off. Let's see if I can do this with scissors. I might need to go get my pruners. Oh, that is gonna be so perfect. What I wanna do is I wanna take it over to the fireplace and then we're gonna go gather some hydrangeas to put around the base. All right, so I've got my hydrangea blooms here. These are for my limelights up in front of our house and they're really close to being dry already. When we had that really cold night, it actually like snapped so much of our stuff that it either turned it brown or it turned it crispy and these survived. Um, so I thought it'd be really pretty to tuck some of these in around the edge of this grass. And in the end, I'm gonna spray the whole thing with the sealer. So I think you can use, like I've heard people say hairspray or like a spray adhesive. This is the only thing I had on hand. So I'm gonna use it. It does say it can be used as a fixative. I'm not sure what that means, but I think it'll work to help keep all of these little seed heads together and on this arrangement, but I kind of want to get it all in place first. So this part is just really easy. I'm just going to trim up the limelights and start placing them around and that'll help the grass kind of stay put as well. And we don't have to worry about water with these hydrangeas because at this temperature and at this stage of their growth, they should just dry in place the rest of the way, just like this. All right, this is the last one. I picked the perfect amount. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, that looks so pretty. It actually looks pretty to have some of the grass coming out like that around. It looks so natural. And it's essentially a free arrangement, <laughs> essentially, because you know, I got to enjoy all of these flowers out in the landscape all season long, like I had already planned. And you don't really plan on using them further on into the season, but this will turn into a nice dry arrangement that you really could use inside for, you know, until next spring, until you want to put something fresh there. So now I'm just going to put a light layer of this sealer on. I'll have to report back to tell you if this works really well. So that's pretty much how we treat our annual grasses around here. We either, you know, toss them, like put them in a burn pile or compost or whatever you do with them, um, leave them up and enjoy them a little bit longer through the season in the landscape or cut them and use them in dry arrangements like this. You really can with some grasses get a lot more time out of them rather than just pulling them out of your containers and being done for the season. I mean, you can just put together something really um, effortless, really. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot that went into this arrangement yet. It is so pretty. And I do assume I'm gonna get asked where I got this container and I've had it for years. It's just a little resin urn. I probably picked it up at a consignment shop or something like that. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful to you as you're going out to clean out your gardens and maybe inspiring to you uh, to put together something like this. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.